Okay, go. guys welcome back to brothers and bolts so we figured since the blocks and the heads are out of machine work we got a few weeks before all those get back so the engine build that's going to slow down for a little bit but we've got this impala here that we have some parts for and uh we're going to go ahead and unbox it for you guys explain what it is that we're going to do and then um we'll get to it but first, I want to remind you guys, subscribe, like, and comment the video. It helps us out a lot. It uh, enables us to bring more content to you guys. So if you want to see more, please, by all means, subscribe, like, and comment the video. And uh, let's get to it. What are stereo. you doing? Charging the battery, it's dead. I don't like that it's dead. Why did it die? Because I think the, uh, I think the previous owner, the way that they wired up the stereo, did not pay attention to how they wired it up. You know as well as I do, there's a right way to do it, and then there's a, my buddy can do it cheaper way to do it. I'm going to say it's a parasitic draw somewhere. Oh yeah. It's got to be. The, it's uh, as dead as it can be. It's hmm. dead. It's, the, it's a brand new battery. Yeah. yeah. But something in the car is leaking. So you got to. It's, it's got to be the head unit. Dude, we got to rip that out. Something's ripping. I know. Uh, careful. To literally rip it out. Yeah, I was gonna say, careful what you say, because I did literally try to rip you it did. out of the dash. I know you <laughs> did. You do. Disconnect the battery. Disconnect it after you're done working on it, so it doesn't until, drain. Until Josh and I can get it out to this place and put it in. So you find out what's causing the drain. Bet you guys didn't know my father was Kenny Wayne, or not? Sorry, Kenny Rogers. Some, something's draining your battery. <laughs> Say hi, Kenny Rogers. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Dad's got a really nice daily. You should do something to it. Supercharge it? Turbo? Something fun. Hey, guys. So... I have some parts for the Impala from Spawn. Spawn, I, I think. I, I don't know exactly how to say it. I'm just going to say Spawn. Maybe it's Spoon or something. Anyway, so I was doing some looking around. I've already done a bunch of uh, suspension projects and reinforcements with this car. And we'll go through that later. But right now, we're going to get into this and I'll kind of tell you what I have in here. I was looking on their website and I found some things that I felt would be a great addition to what I've already got done with the car and these would only reinforce it and make it handle even better because these B-bodies are not known. Oh peanuts! Sweet! This is gonna make a mess. Do it. I... Do it. Do it! You're helping me clean it up. Do it! Yes! <laughs> Parts! Okay. <laughs> so, I have... This is called a uh, spherical sway link. 
Now, the whole idea between this and your standard run-of-the-mill sway links are, so this has a joint down here, normally on your uh, sway links, whether it's front or rear, wherever they are, you've got bushings just like this on both ends. So what I thought was unique and interesting about this was that this bolts down directly to the control arm and then your sway bar goes here. And I think the whole idea behind it is that it allows it to move better and gives you more stability. So I thought I'd give it a try, see how it does. Now these, these are rear shock relocation brackets. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'll unwrap them here shortly. So what these do is with these B bodies, your rear shocks, they're mounted at an angle already. And what I did was another problem with these B bodies. You'll hear me talk more and more about problems with these B bodies. So B body is going to be uh, like your 91 to 96 Buick Roadmaster, Cadillac Fleetwoods, Chevy Capris, the Impala SS, your Roadmaster wagons, Capri wagons. So those are Bebop. Now, with them, the rear wheels are pushed forward. So, and if you just look at anyone on the internet, you're not going to notice it unless you know what you're looking for. So the rear wheels are closer to this part of the wheel well. Well, what I did was I ordered some rear uh, lower and upper control arms. And what that does, that pushes the rear wheel back into the center of the wheel well. I'm OCD. It helps with wheel hop. It helps with, I, I guess, some 60 foot. But I did it because it just helps with my OCD. So when you do that, when you bring that rear wheel back, you push that rear shock back even more. So your angle increases even more from where it mounts on the body. So with these relocation brackets, it puts the shock back forward. So that way, instead of it being at the angle, and you know, you go over a bump, railroad tracks, whatever, and it compresses and binds, it brings it forward and straight, so that way it compresses and retracts normally. So what we'll be doing today, if the weather allows, is putting them on. Whoop. And these little bushings, so these bushings, if my shock, not all shocks have these, but it'll go through the shock bushing on the bottom, and then this bolt will go through it. That's all it is. Okay, so before I go and drone off on the parts and just tell you about what I've done to the car right here. Let me kind of walk around and give you an idea of really all that I have done and still what needs to be done. So, went ahead and replaced the mirrors. Went ahead and so we needed to give it a new radiator. Did a water pump with it. I gave it a new battery but it's dead. So went ahead and I bought BMR sway bars front and rear. So let's see if I can show you. So right there, BMR sway bar. And then I went ahead and rebuilt the entire steering system on the front end. Let me get underneath here and show you. So, polyurethane, greaseful bushings, all new inner, outer tie rod ends, drag link, everything up front. So, the sway links, right 
Oh, yeah, I guess you can kind of see it. So those sway links are what I'm going to be replacing. They're brand new. I'll keep them. I'll hang on to them for a little while. Uh, so, I also had to get all new tires on this thing. I went with a factory sized tire. I went with 255, 50, 17 Nitto NT555 G2s. It's a great summer performance tire. I really like it. I had them on my last car and they worked great. Had a lot of fun with that car too. So, back here, I did a lot of work on the rear end of this car. I had this thing up on jack stands for a really long time. Between work, coming over to the parents, fiddling with it, I, I spent a lot of time doing this. I'm really proud of myself too. Never done anything like this before. So to be able to do it on one of my favorite cars was really exciting for me. So my rear differential cover was leaking, so instead of just replacing the gasket, I went overboard and I got a uh, Moroso uh, diff cover. Um, it just looks pretty. So here's the rear BMR sway bar. This is the uh, it was the biggest rear sway bar I could find. It's just huge, and I can't wait to throw this thing around some corners with it. So right <laughs> right here is my rear trailing arm. This is the trailing arm that you replace to, I guess you can kind of see it, it's right there. You can see it better with the wheels off. So those rear trailing arms, that's what helps kind of push this rear end back and it does increase the angle of the pinion, the drive shaft, in the differential but at the same time it's not that drastic of a change so I'm not too worried about it now if I were bagging this car if I was slamming it to the ground I would get adjustable upper trailing arms but because I'm not doing anything crazier than maybe like a two or two and a half inch drop I'm just not going to I did get the matching QA1 upper trailing arm set. So I did replace the upper trailing arms. It does have new bushings. Um, they're also polyurethane. Are you playing with the peanuts? Dog ears. Having a ton of fun with these peanuts. Yeah. Oh, peanut. Thanks. Goof. I know. He wants to attack the camera. But I still have a number of things left to do on this, like. That filler neck hose right there, I discovered is leaking. I had to siphon a bunch of gas out of this thing because it was just pouring out of it. So I'll have to pull that off. But yeah, really fun project. I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun with it. It's one of my dream cars. I'm going to get inside the shop here. Raining on me out there. So. We'll just tear it apart, have some fun, maybe someday I'll get to drive it. Hey guys, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to start out by taking the rear wheel off, get some uh, better access to the rear shock mounts. I'm going to take the rear shock bolt out and then I'm going to put in that rear shock relocation bracket. So that way, I, again, I can bring that rear shock forward. It's a much nicer day today. Yesterday was pretty crappy out and didn't really feel like doing that. So, got lucky today. Beautiful out. Let's break, uh, break torque on these lug nuts, take the wheel off, get to work. Well, now that we've got the wheel off, I can get to my rear shock mounts. Now, they're down here on the bottom of the uh, 
of the diff or rear end assembly. So what I'm going to do is it's just held on right now by a real simple bolt goes through the rear, uh, it goes through the bottom of the shock, and then it's just held on by a nut. So right here is the back side of the shock mount that's on there now. Well, all I'm going to do is try and take this off. I must have had a much bigger wrench when I did this. Yep, I'm going to need to do something else here. Uh, I got an idea. I'm well aware of how tight I put this on last time. Oh, okay, that's... So this bolt is held on on the back side. It's it's a uh, it's kind of like a a stud that goes through the uh, back side of the shock here. So this is going to be an upgrade all around. Why did I put this on so tight? Why do I put everything on so tight? Because. I guess I didn't think I would be doing this. I found these, those mounts that I showed you. I found them after I had already done all this work back here. Let's see if I can use a bigger ratchet now. Okay, so we're putting in this mount, and I was asking him, what does this even do? So what it does is this mount right here, so it takes the shock, you see how it is. Normally it's mounted like that, and it's pushed back, so it's at an angle. Mm -hmm. And with your shocks, you want them to be straight up and down. So what it does is it turns it sideways and it mm -hmm. brings it forward. So and it pushes it the, forward. What's the benefit of that? The benefit is you don't bind your shocks and blow them out and then have to replace them. Oh. Because this rear end with these QA1 uh, rear trailing arms, it pushes or pulls this whole drive shaft, or not drive shaft, rear axle assembly. It brings it back to center this rear wheel and get rid of wheel hop and uh, just help with overall performance. So to kind of benefit even more, you install one of these and that way you don't have to worry about blowing out your, uh, your rear shocks. Okay. That just goes in. That goes in really fucking okay. simple. Oops. Uh, bleep that out. <laughs> Bleep one. that out. So, it just goes in like this. So now what I'm going to do is I need to push up on this to align this. So to do that... If you guys want to see more of this build, make sure you subscribe and like the video. It really helps us out a lot. Yep. And it keeps you guys informed about what's going on over here at Brothers and Bolts. We'd love for you guys to stick around. Join our family. You know what you could try doing? What? Is put the bracket on the shock first, and then try to stab it through the hole. Because in that way, yeah. you could put the jack on the axle and lift it as you need it. Yeah, okay. That you works. know? Yeah. Give that a shot and see if that works any better. Because yeah. I can see how much of a pain in the ass that's going to be. Yeah, and you can see how much tighter this fits. Yeah. Like that is really tight. Oh, it's going to be one of these deals. Okay. Really have a good story of it. Oh yeah, you do. Holy so God. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, you do. Okay. So my brother and I are saying, oh, it just bolts right in. And there's actually a really <sighs> funny story that goes along with that. Can you tell the hilarity, hilarity of that? Just bolts right in. Well, there was a backwoods North Dakotan, or no, Minnesota.
He was on the Minnesota side. Well, he had a uh, pretty zip-tie thrown-together engine. And um, he... He, my my car needed an engine. And he had one. And it was already pretty well built. Or it made a lot of power. But I can't speak a whole lot for the reliability of it because I know who bought it and it took him years to finally perfect it. Well, anyway, um, I convinced our dad to let me tear apart my car in the garage by saying it bolts right in. Now, for my own, I don't know. Defense? Yeah, we'll say defense. For in your defense, own defense. Was, it did. But what didn't was, I think it was, um, I think I was having an issue with the engine mounts. Well, Dad didn't want to have that car sitting in the garage for very long, so he told us to just tear it out and... We rebuilt the factory engine, and I still put a turbo on it and ran it like that for a while until I blew up my transmission with it. <laughs> but uh, that car, race car life. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, that transmission was weak anyway. Yeah. But um, it just I, I I guess just because of his own frustration, he always says now we'll bolt right in because yep. it never does. Yep. There's always work. <laughs> kind of, just like what I'm dealing with right here. I thought that the tolerances were already checked, and that it would drop right in, but I'm needing to put a little bit of work into this, because it only goes so far. So now, i got to find a way. It's, a it's, always, it's always our famous last words. Oh, it just bolts right in. It's kind of like an inside family joke. Yeah. Dad can attest to that. It's an inside family Just joke kind that of like makes fun of me. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go get a punch. Okay, we got it in there. We had to use a punch to line the holes up. Now I'm using the bolt to get it the rest of the way. Ow. We'll show you guys this one, but I think after this you've probably seen enough. So I'll just fast forward through the next one and then we'll get on to those tie rod links. Ow. You need a that not a hammer. Okay, that works too. Yeah, it works. Got it. Oh. Why don't you just put it in? That's like an electrician using a crescent wrench for a hammer. Man, that's, that's me. Tight, Jesus. That's me. Okay. All right. There you go. Good. I put it on the right way. I think. Are you going to be able to get that nut on with the the sway bar in the way like that? Well, this works. There you go. Yeah. I just got to make sure that. Yeah. So this slanted. Mm-hmm. I was facing down. So now, yeah, I gotta pick this up. Mm -hmm. There you go. No, yeah, that's good. There you go. Boom! Just like that. That is how it works. See? This one actually legit bolted right in. It's a Chevy. <laughs> It's a B body. Everything about this car bolts right in. It starts with the letter B. It has to. Hmm. Uh, shiny side down. I wonder if everything bolts right in for B is for build. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already going to say no. Have you seen how much stuff that they make? His Huracan's pretty badass. It's pretty cool. He kind of gave us the idea to start this. Be really neat so, to meet him someday. Yeah, it would. He seems like a cool dude. It'd be fun to talk about some of his builds. Let's see, what's going to be easiest here? Uh, definitely this. Right. Yeah, because I'm not going to be able to get it. And then get... Uh, I'll have to put a wrench on the back side of it. No, forget that. Make it easy on yourself, dude. 
Oh. Hook up the air compressor, grab the half-inch impact, run them bastards in. Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What is there to know? Huh. <laughs> A lot. Why... why are you... Ow. making things harder on yourself? Ugh. Okay, so I finally convinced him to just... use the Ugga Dugga machine. Okay. What we're about to do is a likes... big no-no. No, it's not. It's a big yes-yes. No, what I'm saying is, like, you are not supposed to use impact with... Oh, with, with, a, don't, with don't those do steel yeah, don't, sockets. Yeah, don't do It'll this. be fine. It, it will be fine. It's okay. Yeah, don't. I do it all the time. You should not admit to that. Why? <laughs> okay, that's awesome. I like making things... Easy. Oh, dog. My bang, dog bang, bang. doesn't like... I'm going to guess four and a half Ugga Duggas. Well, let's see what happens, I guess. God dang, that sucked it right up. Told you. That's good. Well, it won't pull it any closer. That's we'll get a deep well. Run her down. Let's see what happens. Is a horrible way to say things. Yeah, that's in. That's as good as it'll get. Run her in. That is on. Told you. Bam. Done. Relocated shock. Next. So, you guys got to hear this story. <laughs> My brother, when he first had his Z, we were young, and we thought underglow was the thing. Like, that was really cool. Back in Fargo, North Dakota, I think it was. And this son of a bitch right here, what, you were like 16? You were young. 15, 16, this poor kid. Oh my god, this is so funny. Okay, so this guy's jacking his car up, and he didn't know where to jack it up at. So he was jacking it up on the floor pan of the Nissan, right? Well, what he didn't know was that he was making a huge dent on the inside of his car. So when he got his car up, he opened the door, and there's a giant hump in the footwell where the jack had been. You remember that? I do. You know how I fixed it? With a hammer? With a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> remember who did that? Somebody wanted to key this car. I don't know who that was or why. This was, by the way, before we bought it. They keyed the hell out of it. Yeah, I don't... I don't make enemies like that. And then we got a nice big dent right there. Yeah, Gotta he get that he came fixed. out from Walmart and saw that. We'll get it fixed. Oh, It'll be alright. This dog and his ball. <sighs> Run it in. She is in. Are you done? Yeah. Can we do a burnout yet? <sighs> you guys want to see a burnout? I can get away with it. Yeah. I know you want to see a burnout. Let's do it. Let's Give me do it. it. Give me some likes. Hey, maybe you didn't hear me the first time. Let's go rip a fatty. You guys want to see a, a fatty? <laughs> we gotta rip a fatty. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. All right, we'll try and find a place. Yes. Come on, rip a fatty. It's a horrible idea. It's not a bad idea. It's a good idea. What if my wheels fall off? Your wheels ain't. We torqued them, right? It's fine. You torqued them. You. Torqued them. I torqued my side. You torqued one, and I torqued the other. Right. Hopefully the dog does. I don't know, is this stupid dog following? No. I don't have any gas. You gotta go to the gas station. Is that a good excuse? Yep. Let's... Let's go get some gas. Yep, let's fill her up. Fill it up. And, uh... Rip a fatty. Let's just go down the road a little bit. 
I don't see anybody. We're just going to go down that way. Okay, go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, we're getting into some big money. We uh I think I think the deal was two hundred dollars for the washer and dryer. I came walked in here and looked at Dad's Harley and said, Hey Dad, I bet you your Harley don't run no more. And he says, Well, how much you want to put on that? So it sounds like two hundred bucks is on the line here, that it's not gonna start in ten seconds or less. Right? I wasn't driving this with the hood open, was I? I don't know. You're changing the subject here. What? Okay, so I think the bet here is that Dad's Harley okay. so, will not start in 10 seconds or less for 200 bucks. Sure. That sounds like a, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah, sure. If it, if okay. it starts in 10 seconds. Hold up, I gotta get my phone. If it starts in 10 seconds. Then... Now you just paid 400 bucks for that washer dryer. No. <laughs> That's seven years old, by the way. <laughs> oh, what you're saying is if it doesn't start in 10 seconds, you get it for free. Is that what you're saying? What do you got? Uh, I got a camera. <laughs> One a buck. One five bucks. <laughs> you? Uh, I think I'm okay. Cause I'm think I'm gonna back out of this. But I remember the last time we tried firing it up, it took a bit. Cause she is cold hearted. This is a carbureted bike. Me. I'll give you a buck if it fires in less than 10 seconds. Fires or starts? Starts. If it starts in less than 10 seconds. Give me a dollar. Okay. If it doesn't, I give you a dollar. Right. Okay. Okay, hold up, hold up. Okay. You ready? You ready? Well, we gotta, we gotta start. Okay, okay. gotta hit start button. And then Go ahead, Dan. And start it. Oh, oh, we're gonna time this? Yep. Well, yeah, that's 10 seconds, so... All right. Hey, you say when. I didn't get ready. All right, it's cold. Okay. Make sure I got it. This one's just correct. Son of a bitch! <laughs> it's for sale. There you have it. Right. Okay, you win. I don't know. What are we talking there? <laughs> Two hundred and one dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you just earned Two hundred and one dollars. <laughs> oh, that's just funny right there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that'll be it for this episode. Stay tuned. <laughs> Subscribe, like, shoot us a comment. We'll see you guys next time.